Hey, what's up everybody? My name's Russ with rwresearch.com. Welcome to the shed. Today, I got something really fun. I'm gonna give you my brief, short, overview thoughts about the new Duet or Duet Wi-Fi Electronics. They finally arrived. So excited. So I actually pre-ordered this board and uh, the pre-orders were supposed to be white. Uh, I think that's like a pre-production board and this one's not white, but there were some complications and I actually don't know the details except for I have one in my hands. It finally got here after several months. Thanks to the comments uh, in my build videos that you guys recommended that they were making this. So I did, I did pre-order this. Really exciting. Why did I pre-order this? Mainly because of the drivers. The drivers will do 256 micro-stepping. That was really the key component. So, I'm gonna try to make this short because I wanna just give you my first impressions. All right, let's go. Okay, so my first impressions on this board. The first thing I want to talk about are the motor drivers. So the original Duet, the uh, 0 0.8.5, for some reason I thought it had higher drivers on it, but it actually only has 16 micro-stepping drivers on it. That was a mistake in my purchase, and I actually thought it was higher, so I'm very happy about that. So these chips are actually the TMC2660, and the short little testing I did with them, thumbs up so far. More higher review ratings and I'll do some noise stuff and I'll record some good audio and that's a whole nother video. This is my first impressions. So this board is a um, ARM based processor. It is a 32-bit processor. So is the old version of this. However, this version has Wi-Fi built right into it. So the Wi-Fi module is built right onto the end of the board where normally there's an ethernet jack here on the other version. Now for me that's really great because I was having to find a place to put a Wi-Fi router and stuff and I didn't really want to do that. So that's already a thumbs up for me. Uh, there are extra pins here for an LCD display like a 20, uh, 20 character 2, 4 line LCD display like you have on a old ramps system. So you can interface that here still. Has an SD card, an extra SD card output. I don't think the old version had that from my understanding. Also has a breakout board, and you can see all the pins there. Let's see if we can get it to focus. All the different uh, the different pins on on outputs. That's a totally an isolated breakout. So you can actually put up, uh, I think, up to like seven or eight or even more uh, extruders on this thing, which is crazy. Or extra motors for other things. So I want to talk about the firmware, the software the web server, and everything that goes along with this. So I plugged this guy in. I had a lot of trouble with it at, at the first glance. Finally, I figured it out, uh, and then I was able to connect to it. Had to figure out how to get to access to the IP address, because at this exact stage, you can't actually set it. So you got to kind of do some funky stuff. But at the end of the day, it was still way easier to figure out than, than having to set up a router and get it connected. Uh, you basically plug the board in to power, and right there on your screen, it shows what Wi-Fi connections are open and what you connect to. You just punch in the uh, code or the uh, password. You don't even have to put security ratings or anything. They're all, it all registers it automatically. So you put that in, boom, it says reboot. You reboot it and you can, you can connect to it right to the web server, just like that. Really easy stuff. So I'll show you uh, during this little snippet exactly how that works. It's just really simple. Uh, this does have a built-in SD card reader, so does the older version. However, the one really, really, really impressive thing, for me anyway, is how you update firmware. So on the old version you can't do this, but on this version you can. You just drop the firmware, you can even do it through the web interface, you drop the firmware onto the SD card, you punch in an M997 command with an S value at the end, 1, 2, 3, 0, 1, 2, and 3, depending on which firmware you want to flash. Do you want to flash the web server, do you want to flash the Wi-Fi card, or do you want to flash the main ARM processor? And you can actually do that without ever even plugging into it over the Wi-Fi, which is really, really cool stuff. Um, even the older version, you have to plug into it and do some sort of hard coding to really get into the back end through terminal. 
Um, now, if you hit the erase button like I did, or the reset button, the erase button. If you hit the erase button, you got to go in there and program it the hard, hardwired program way, which is okay. I did that on accident and went through that process. It worked fine. Um, so I'm really impressed about how you update firmware. Uh, you can also do that on the touch panel, which is another reason why I like the Duet, the Duet, Duet Electronics. Uh, the old version also does support the panel dune. All right, so this is actually a four and a half uh, inch, four and a half inch, and the other one I have is a seven inch. So I'll be using this on the old Delta. Uh, what else? Um, the web interface, the touch screen, the ARM processor, it is a 32-bit. And uh, for a Delta, you can run a RAMPS and run a Delta. I've been doing it for three and a half years. It works, but this is going to make life so much better. Now, with a little bit of interface I've used with the Duet uh, 0.8.5, I can tell you it's going to be life-changing for 3D printing. The way you interact with the printer, the way the LCD screen works, the touch interface, it's just, it just, it's just so much easier. Now, one of the things they fixed about the web server on this guy, and you might be able to update the old one, probably, I'm not sure yet, but one of my complaints was you can only edit the system or the config.g file live, like on the fly through the web server. Now, though, you can pick any file on the SD card and you can edit it right there. Awesome. So my my initial overview, I haven't printed with this, but I've interfaced with it, I've set it up, I've programmed it. Uh, my next step is to actually plug it in and see the difference between the old Duet Electronics and the new Duet Electronics. But relatively, they're going to react the same. They're going to run very similar. It's just the interface and how you do that with the web server. So. Anyway, this is my personal opinion review just at a glance. I'll do a much deeper review, hopefully, uh, later in time when I'm actually printing with it. But currently, I wanted to let everybody know my personal opinion. Totally awesome. It's, really, it's a totally different way to interface. Uh, the other thing I really, really like about this particular electronics is it's heavily supported right now. You can go get support. The forms are like completely open and you can just go there and ask questions and people respond to it. That's that's a key component to getting this thing to work is if you have a problem people respond to it. If you want to integrate a piece of software, you th something that you want to try to do, they're open for ideas like this is the type of community and board you want to probably use in your printer. The ramps board, it works, don't get me wrong, but this is going to make life a lot better. So anyway, um, something else I was going to say and I forgot what it was. Uh, in order to like really build the actual firmware, you actually have to build the firmware into a .bin file, into a bin file, and then you just download that right to the system. So, how do you actually like put your stuff in the system? There are different files such as bed.g and uh, there's a few others I'll show you on the screen here. But basically you edit those files, each one of those files, one does bed leveling, one sets up the generic uh, main uh, parameters, the other one actually controls some of your Z-probe stuff and how you retract and set and pause and run. Like There's a bunch of different smaller files that you actually edit those files are read when you boot the system up and that is what is configured into there. So you can change those on the fly without ever actually uploading the firmware again. So it's sort of like EEPROM but everything's written on the SD card. So it's a it's a totally different way of going about it. The old Duet, Duet electronics were the same way but um, yeah, they're pretty well the same. Those those two systems, the 8.0.5, 0.8.5, anyway, those systems are relatively the same. But anyway, it's just a completely different way that I'm used to about programming, changing, modifying the 3D printer on the fly. Uh, in the near future, I believe they'll be integrating on-the-fly changing of micro-stepping. So let's say you were printing some big parameter perimeters and in, in the infill and stuff you want to do it really fast but you don't have enough torque at the small micro steps you can actually change that on the fly and then do the outside at a really high resolution if, if it works that way I don't really know about the resolution and the steps and 
that's little details that I'll learn along the way. But basically, it's just a totally different way of looking at it. So back to the other video. Hmm. Anyway, that's it. I will do a much, much uh, deeper thinking through this thing. But at a, at a first glance, I like this thing a lot. So that's it. Have a good day. Thank you for watching. And I'll see you next video. Bye.